Hi, I'm going to show you quickly how I make scenes using uh, Isadora, using Zoom OSC. I've got some great ideas from other people who've done this, so this is not all my own stuff. This is totally using other people's stuff, um, plus some things that I added and little JavaScript stuff to chop things up. Um, so TLDR, show my stage here, which I have a screenshot from the last rehearsal. These numbers are the orders that I have um, in the layout object up here and the cast is in this other object over here. These are both um, user actors. And I set it up so I just hit the number one if I want to move actor one, hit one, and drag that person around. Number two, I click hit two and move two around. Three, move three around. And then, um, so that's just pressing the mouse button. I have mouse listeners. And if I use the right mouse button, let's say I want to make number one bigger, I'll move one over here with the left button. If I click the right button, they size, it changes the size. So I can make one big over there, then I can make five a little bit smaller, and I can make two a little bit smaller, and I can really quickly lay out a page. This, oops, that's two, and now I hit three. Really quickly lay out a page. And that is the TLDR of all this. Stay on, and I'll show you how this works. Starting with the OSC listeners. This is where I listen to Zoom OSC. I won't go all through all of the boxes, but the gallery count just sets a gal count global variable. So this is the listener. This is the global variable setter. I have the Zoom OSC gallery order listener here, and here's the order of the boxes relative to the, uh, the performance config file. And it just uh, sets them in this gal order global variables. This is just a little JavaScript that simply adds one to each of the numbers. When this triggers, I start zoom load to make sure it loads up the conf performance config file um, in Zoom OSC. So all that is to set up Zoom OSC. Down here, I have two mo more channels I listen to. Instead of having the actors turn on and off their video, I have them just mute and unmute their sound so that, so I have triggers here watching for their sound state and um, showing or hiding their video based on that. That way you don't see the boxes getting changing and moving around be behind them during a show. Since there's two listeners, the listener for the sound on and sound off, if it's on, it triggers a one. If it's off, it triggers a zero, so you're one or zero. And it sets the global variable sound to be one or zero for each of the users in the performance config file. Here, the, uh, this other setup page, so I have this thing here. When this scene triggers, it says uh, activate the scene, number two, OSC listener, and um, just leave it there. Make sure it stays on the whole time because that needs to always be watching people muting and unmuting. The rest of this setup is where I calculate where those boxes are. Here's the screenshot. I'll just drag it in here. The screenshot from the show, so here they, the boxes are. Um, and the numbers are the order that I have them in the layout user actor. So I just stuck blobs over them and put the numbers on there so it's really easy for me to find. Normally I wouldn't do it with the green blob too. I'll just stick a number on top of them, on top of the actor, so I can lay out the actors because I know them by look and by name. So I'll just move this to my external screen and make it full screen. So that's what I'll be watching instead of a live Zoom OSC. I'm just doing a screenshot from it. But during actual rehearsals and show, there'll be a live Zoom OSC on that other screen there. So here's where I calculate what the, the pan value should be for the panners. So I can say I want a pan to be a certain zoom level, a certain size, a certain height and width, and a certain location on the screen. And that's what I'm going to be doing, basically panning across that other screen that I was talking about. So here you can see I take my video. This is really just um, a capture. And uh, I just made it so that it's always the same capture. So I, I made a user actor out of it. So here I get the video size, width, and height. And I stick that into the screen width and screen height. And then add the parameter 1, 2, 3 for each of the screen sizes. So here we are. We get the width, the height, and the box count. And this JavaScript calculates uh, first, the, it just passes through the box count, and then it gives the box width and box height because all, all of the boxes are the same width and height, no point in passing them around for every box. And then the horizontal and vertical position relative to the screen. Um, and all this is in my little comments on the top, too. Uh, 
I'm not going to walk through the code, but I'll just show you. I have some JavaScript code. You're, it's it's out there. I made a, a gist for it, and it's also included in in this um, in this file. Okay, so that's it for the setup. Um, I do this debug setup where I just for because I use a screenshot, I say there's a seven actor screen, and here are the positions of those actors on the screen, and all their sounds are on. So just for setting up the scenes. So you saw before how I laid this thing out. Um, I'm going to show you how each of these objects work. So the cast one is the one that chops up the pieces and gives you a video for each of the members of the cast. The layout takes those video and puts, and puts the boxes in their places over here in, in your stage. So how does cast work? starting with the gal count. This is simply a gate. If, if this ever gets to zero, I don't want to pass any video through. There's no point in doing that. Uh, this is the video input that we're starting with the screen capture. So given a screen, here's where I crop that screen to all the different actors. And that is pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, it looks like a lot, of, it's a lot of lines, but really um, I'll dig into each of these. So it takes the gal count and the video in, and I have this zoom box panner. Here's the zoom box panner. So what I do is first, um, these gates simply don't pass through the video after, in this case, a seven. So if there are seven actors, I don't pass any through anything through on the eighth, ninth, tenth, etc. Um, and here are the panners. This is a standard panner. Take the video, given a width, height, horizontal, and vertical. I pass back the piece of the screen, the subset of the screen that it's, uh, that it's panning through. Um, so down here are the zoom pans. So, so up the top half we get the videos, the bottom half we get those pan values. You saw the pan values before. We have the width and the height. All the boxes get the same, so those are very, a lot of lines going everywhere. And then horizontal one, and vertical one, H2, V2, H3, etc. Almost all of this is just assembling the names of the global variables to pass through. So here we have uh, pan 7 zoom. So we have pan 7 1, pan 7 2, pan 7 3. And so stringing those names together and saying that's the global variable I want, and then pass them out. So right now I'm looking at a seven person screen like that one I showed you, which is the screenshot that I took. Um, it will take those seven and now pass the width and height and the H and V's for each of those seven boxes on the screen. So now we have the boxes in order. Now um, we just simply use these panners. And what's pretty cool about these panners is that it shows a little picture of where it's panning. So it's top, middle, right. The output is simply zoom box one, two, three, etc. So that is the panners. Um, then down here we have the order. This is the order of the actors from that page. So, so we have the boxes in the order that they're on the screen. Then we have the order of the actors as they're listed in the file. And I just route them. I just connect the two to a router. And I output the video for each actor in the order from the file. That, that's all there is to it. That's kind of, uh, kind of cool how simple it was. It's a lot of lines, but it's not hard to do. This here is the mute gate. This is where I take the video and I decide whether or not to show the video based on the user's sound um, setting. Is it on or off? If it's on, it shows it. If it's off, it gates it. So these are just the global values for sound. In this case, I have them all on right now. And if they're on, I show the video. If they're off, I don't show this in the video. It's pretty straightforward. I have this extra little delay thing. Let's look at a delay. Um, all this does is saying if, I'm, if it switches to on, then I turn it on right away because I'm actually later on I'm going to be fading them in. I don't want them to just pop on. I want them to fade on in over half a second. So if they go off, I wait a second in to give it time to do that fade out before it actually turns off the value. So that's all this is. It's nothing fancy. It just says uh, if you turn it on, do it right away because you need to be able to see that fade in. If you turn it off, then wait a second to give it time to fade out. And that's it. Uh, that is all there is to the cast. There's the cast and the ability to turn on and off their video based on their sound status. Now the layout side, I'll show the box mover in a minute. 
is just a bunch of box projectors. So I had the names of the actors here. So you would want to put in the names of your actors so you have them in order. And um, this is not necessarily the same. In fact, it's not the same order as the ones from the file. In the file, at first I have the Zoom OSC and then I have Newton Theater Company, but they're not on stage too much or actually ever. So I decided to make the first one Adam because he's an actor who's on the most and then Tamika's on a lot and Bob and Valerie. So I just have them kind of in order that how frequently they're on stage. So I could be pressing ones and twos more than threes and fours and fives and six. Um, and they just take the video for that actor. So then the horizontal vertical for where they are on the screen, the zoom for how big they are, and the intensity for how intense they should be, you know, how their transparency. In this particular show, we have some angels, which we, I lower their intensity a little bit so they fade into the background a little. Um, and I need the actor index. This is the index from that performance config file. So in this case, Adam is the third one in the file, so I put that there. I need that to get to their sound settings, which I'll show you inside here. So the simplest case before I get to the stuff down below, I'm just projecting it. So it's the video, horizontal vertical, the zoom, and the intensity, I pass the intensity in. Now down here is a bunch of fancy stuff just to deal with the sound on and off. So here's the actor index. Here's all the sound values. I use a selector to decide which one we're dealing with right now. So we're talking about actor number three. So I'm looking at this one gets passed here that their sound is on. So I do a few things just to figure out if this is going on or off. If it's being turned on, I use this envelope generator that goes from zero to 100. And if it's being turned off, I use this one to go from 100 to zero. And I do pass in that same intensity that I pass here. I will also pass into these values. So if the person's only going to go up to 75%, I don't want this to try to go more. So I use that value as the start or the end, depending on the direction. And then I take that output and pass it into the intensity. That is it. I think, um, I think I'm ready to show you how to make a new scene. Let's make another scene. So I will go to scene one and duplicate it. I'll call this one scene two. And let's say we only have um, a few people in here. Let's, we don't have Newton Theater Company. Let's say this one is just Bob and Valerie. So we saw all those things going away. I'll just move this up here. So let's move three over here and make this person a little bit bigger. I'm gonna do right click to make them bigger and left click to move them. Number I hit the number four on the keyboard, put them here, right click to move them, left click to make them bigger. And let's move three over a little bit more and four over a little, oops, I didn't hit the four key. Four to move them over a little bit more. Um, and there it is, I just made a new scene. You can add uh, all the other things you need to your projectors if you're going to be uh, doing alpha channels and all of that. I'm doing some of that also, but I just tried to keep it to a bare minimum here and for this example. Hope that helps. Enjoy it. Um, good luck with your next show. Thanks.